A nameless man gets hit by a car accident and dies on the spot, but he later gets reincarnated as a sword in an alternate world, as he learns more about his new surroundings, he realizes that he can gain new powers and increase his skills by slaying monsters around him. Therefore he starts using this knowledge to his advantage and slowly becomes more powerful each day, he notices that the further he goes from the place he was reincarnated in, the more powerful monsters he meets, but it also gives him the added advantage to confront dangerous enemies to acquire more influential powers. The magical sword uses this opportunity to explore new regions, becoming more powerful in the process, however when he arrives in the wilted forest and tries to take a rest, he realizes that he has gotten stuck in the mud and can't use any of his powers, elsewhere a young cat girl lives a life of misery while working for humans who have enslaved her people. Despite being dehumanized daily, they can't do much as the neckband and slave contract takes makes them incapable of standing for themselves as they can't even refuse any orders given to them irrespective of how unreasonable they may be. One normal evening the humans use carriages to cross the wilted forest that carries their luggage and the enslaved cat people, while the weather is not very pleasant, it becomes the least of their worries, when they realize that they are being followed by a bloodthirsty two-headed bear. Using his brute strength the beast easily manages to toss the carriage aside, forcing the people to come out of it, the humans who are in control of the slaves order them to stay in their place, so that they can themselves run away, while the beast is busy hunting others down. Since the neckband makes it impossible for the cat people to disobey their owners, they are stuck in their place, however when the human who gave them their orders tries to flee, he is caught in the carnage started by the two-headed bear, as the body of one of the cat people falls on him, he is unable to move on time and the beast just crushes him on the spot. After his death the order he gave to his slaves becomes meaningless and the cat people are free to run for their lives, unfortunately it is too late for most of them as the two-headed bear is too close and easily begins to kill them one after another. Luckily the brave cat girl who had previously tried to take a stand for her people sees the magical sword stuck in the mud right in front of her, she wastes no time getting a hold of him, that's when she and the magical sword realize that they can communicate using telepathy as soon as they are in contact. The latter encourages the cat girl to take him out of the mud and use him to fight back, just when the two-headed beast almost gets to her, the magical sword uses telekinesis to take her a few feet away, well beyond the reach of the beast. After acquiring abilities like sword magic, sword art and fire power by skill sharing, the young cat girl fights against the two-headed bear with the magic sword in her hand, the battle is one-sided the duo easily manages to kill the beast in the end. After killing the two-headed bear, the young cat girl expresses her gratitude and is about to leave the magical sword where she found him, but the latter expresses his desire to go along with the girl, however before she could make a decision, one of the humans that has survived the carnage by running away arrives there. When he sees the cat girl with the sword he asks her to hand him over, when she refuses he gives her an order to show that she is in his control no matter what she wants, he goes on to brag about and show the slave contract to her to remind her that she will always have to follow his orders. The magical sword that has been hearing their conversation so far, uses telekinesis and firepower to burn the contract itself, which frees the cat girl from her life of enslavement immediately. It turns out that the girl's name is Fran and she starts calling the magic sword, Teacher, after learning that he doesn't have a name. Furthermore she also agrees with his request to become his true wielder from that day onwards. Fran's parents wanted to evolve desperately and decided to embark on the seemingly impossible quest despite the dangers, despite overexerting themselves, they never achieved their goal and perished in the process, now Fran plans to turn their dreams into reality, and with the magic sword with her it really does sound like a real possibility. The eccentric duo comes across an adventurer named Randall who is ambushed by goblins and is struggling to defend himself, Fran does not think twice and immediately springs into action, she slaughters them one after another and eventually manages to save Randall without any injuries. Realizing that she can be helpful and offer him protection, Randall offers to take her to a lesser town for free, but Fran sees right through it thanks to the magic sword, however Fran accepts Randall's help, on their way the two get to know each other a little and the former finds out about adventurers. The job immediately strikes her as interesting, so she decides to earn her guild card as soon as possible, however when they reach Alessa, the magic sword is surprised to see so many weapons with superior stats, 
He begins to lose confidence but Fran reassures her that he is unlike any one of them. Fran then visits the nearby Adventurers Guild where she meets the receptionist Nell. When the black cat girl tells her that she plans to register herself, Nell naturally doubts her abilities, she informs Fran that the test is going to involve many risks and the guild will not take responsibility if she gets seriously injured. Such warnings have no effect on Fran who is determined to get her guild pass, Nell takes Fran to a powerful Oni named Donadrond, who is going to test her abilities and finally decide whether she is worthy of the guild card or not. The examiner's aura is menacing and Nell knows that sometimes it is more than enough to turn away candidates who do not appear promising, however to her surprise, Fran is unperturbed by Donadron's show-off, the magic sword knows that the examiner is very powerful and tells Fran to not hold back this time. Meanwhile the people in the adventurer's guild who saw the black cat girl register for the exam believe that she won't last long in the test, as the fight begins, Donadron uses his superior speed to surprise Fran on multiple instances as she barely gets time to react. The examiner is relentless and one of his attacks is so powerful that even Nels thinks that he is overdoing it, luckily Fran avoids serious injury by using the sword to reduce the impact, Donadron is impressed by her presence of mind, meanwhile the sword decides to use supportive magic that temporarily increases Fran's STR and AGI. In her next attack she manages to leave a cut on the examiner's biceps thanks to superior sword mastery, Donadron feels that even though her skills are impressive they won't be able to save her for long, unfortunately that assessment turns out to be very inaccurate. Fran thanks to the help of her magic sword, starts using magic along with her sword skills that catch the examiner off guard, meanwhile Nell is shocked as she believes that using both at the same time will require two brains, Donadron does not last long after that and the test is finished with Fran standing tall while the examiner is buried under rubble. After the test Donadron along with Fran go to the guild master Klimt, who is also impressed by the black cat girl's superior abilities, she is then taken to get her mana wavelength checked and Nell is shocked to realize that she is fit for multiple classes and can master any one of them. However Fran chooses the sword mage class boost following which she receives her adventurer registration and the guild pass, after that she gets gold in exchange for the monsters she has slaughtered. Unfortunately a few mercenaries believe she cheated so they disrespect the cat tribe and try to bully her, Fran does not hold back and teaches them a lesson for crossing their limits. After acquiring the guild card and becoming a registered adventurer, Fran starts exploring Alessa city with her sword, teacher recalls that the town is home to a legendary blacksmith, while they are walking around the market, a dwarf named Gurus asks Fran to visit his shop as he wishes to sell her his equipment. However teacher uses his powers and is able to figure out that he is none other than the honorary wandering blacksmith of Granzel, although he tells Fran to follow Gurus back to his shop, teacher advises her to keep her guard up at all times, Garrus later confesses that he saw Fran fight in the adventurer's guild and it gave him a good idea of her fighting prowess. He only sells his equipment to worthy customers and Fran has already passed the test by standing up to the bullies, at the shop Garrus gives her high quality gear that costs 150,000 gold, although it is expensive Fran decides to buy the enchanted armor as it makes her far stronger than she actually is. However Gurus surprises her by revealing that he knows that the sword she is carrying is actually an intelligence weapon, furthermore he also figures out that Fran can even interact with it, while teacher believes that he is just an ordinary sword because of his average attack stat. Gurus argues that it would not be an appropriate criterion to judge the true extent of his powers, he explains that teacher can significantly boost his attack stat thanks to this mana conductivity power, Gurus goes on to reveal that Teacher could only be forged by one of the Divine Blacksmiths, who are credited with the creation of five legendary weapons. Since he is one of the best at developing best-in-class equipment, Teacher pays Gurus lavishly to make a scabbard for himself and other gear for Fran, after promising to meet the honorary wandering blacksmith of Granzel a few weeks later, Fran and Teacher go to the market for shopping. They visit a clothes shop where Fran buys herself everything she needs after which they purchase food and book an inn, after a good sleep Fran decides to fulfill her duties as an adventurer, however she soon learns that G-rank adventurers are typically tasked to look for herbs, the only monster related quest that they can be assigned is subjugating level 3 goblins. While Fran is on her first quest as an adventurer to find herbs, she is startled by the commotion from a nearby place. When she manages to finally reach there, 
She is surprised to find out that the goblins that have previously ambushed Randall have now managed to evolve into hobgoblins. By managing to surround adventurers Lily, Krull and Eustace from all sides, they appeared to be planning to hunt them down, Teacher immediately understood how the fight will unfold as the adventurers were not only outnumbered but were also nowhere near skillful enough to kill the hobgoblins. Fren realized that only she could save them, so without a care for her own life she decided to fight the beasts, she pushed herself to the extreme and managed to slay the hobgoblins, saving the lives of three adventurers who are also of the same rank as her. However once the fight is finished, one of these adventurers points to the concerning numbers of hobgoblins in the region which could only be explained by the presence of a goblin king. But if this turns out to be true, then the king will eventually find a goblin queen to give birth to his own army of hobgoblins, which will be disastrous. Soon their numbers will grow so much that they will start invading human land for food and other needs, since the hobgoblins were found near Alessa city, it is a potential target for attack, realizing the threat they pose, Friend does not think twice before deciding to find their den so that they are killed before the Goblin King and Queen meet each other to create their army. After realizing that there are a lot of goblins in the jungle near the dungeon, Friend starts killing all of them by herself without expecting any form of assistance from others, she overexerts herself in the process but inspires Teacher to help her achieve her dreams of becoming more powerful in the process. Killing so many goblins on her own obviously has a huge toll on her body and her shield is damaged, therefore friend visits Gurus to get the much needed repairs done as soon as possible, friend then explains to him how she fought against the goblins earlier that evening. By the time she had killed well over a hundred of them, a few adventurers arrived on the scene astonished by what she has just achieved, one of them requests her to return to the town and promises to investigate the region in the meantime, after that friend visits Clint's office. Donadrond is also there and both of them get shocked when they learn that Fran had just killed about 130 goblins all on her own. Clint realizes Fran's potential and rewards her by giving her an immediate promotion even though she argues that she has not completed all the required quests to deserve it. After listening to the whole story Gurus is naturally impressed, he repairs her shield using his magical tools and Fran soon leaves to take some rest as she has overexerted herself. On the day of the raid friend visits Gurus shop again and interestingly he has been eagerly waiting for them as he wants to show them the scabbard that he has constructed for teacher. It turns out to be very comfortable with an inbuilt feature that allows teacher to unsheath himself on his own with Fran's help, as his happy customers prepare to leave for the dungeon raid, Gurus gives them his best wishes, later that day Donadrond addresses a huge group of adventurers. He starts by establishing the priority that they are there to tackle the serious possibility of a goblin stampede, the alarming number of goblins in and around the region obviously points to the fact that they don't have much time left, the main goal of the team is to kill the goblin king and queen, followed by defeating the dungeon master. Donadrond asks his men to set up a temporary camp outside the dungeon to prepare for the big day, however before he ends his speech, everyone's attention turns towards something else, it turns out that goblins have suddenly come out of the dungeon in huge numbers and they have started attacking the adventurers. It forces everyone else to defend themselves as their companions are killed one after another, Fren notices that the hobgoblins are attacking as a unit, so teacher advises her to help others by fighting them while she makes her to the dungeon's entrance. Overlooking the adventurers who worry that she is putting herself into trouble, Fren walks straight to the danger zone without a fear for her life, Interestingly the goblins just walk away from her and teacher feels that this is probably happening because of her goblin slayer title which makes her look like a demon to these monsters. As she almost reaches the entrance, friend notices that a hobgoblin is about to kill an adventurer and saves his life by killing the enemy, however the entrance has been totally blocked because of the ongoing fight so friend uses an advanced skill named Midair Jump, which she acquired from Tyrant Saber Tiger. Once above everyone else, she uses fire magic tri explosion to take down a huge number of enemies, clearing the way for her companions, she then goes on to kill more goblins using the sonic wave technique. Friend then notices that a huge number of goblins are crammed at the entrance, teacher sees this as an opportunity and uses flame magic flare blast to get rid of almost all of them, she then heads inside the dungeon on her own, leaving the remaining goblins to other adventurers. Friend finally manages to enter the dungeon alone, Naturally she is met with hordes of goblins inside but teacher tells her to kill only those who can provide them with crystals worthy of the trouble. 
Therefore Fran selectively kills the dangerous hobgoblins in the path and continues to ignore the rest until she manages to make it to the part of the dungeon where the goblin king and queen are guarded by their army. Teacher is extremely cautious and tells Fran that he will use a few long-range attacks to weaken the defense around goblin king and queen, so that she can then use the opportunity to exterminate both of them at once, unfortunately his powers turn out to be too overwhelming and both of them die along with their small battalion of goblins by the long-range attack itself. As they explore the dungeon even further Fran finds another gate, once she enters it with her magical sword, she is swarmed by countless bugs who continue to attack despite their best efforts. Ultimately Teacher recognizes that the army beetle's leader, who has been summoning more bugs and with the help of friend manages to get rid of every single one of them for good. After killing an army of bugs, Fran and Teacher notice another gate that leads to an even deeper part of the dungeon. Since they sense a strong mana presence inside, Teacher casts some buffs to prepare Fran for the upcoming challenge, he gives her a sensory boost, all resistance, a physical boost and regeneration. While all of these upgrades are definitely required, when Teacher and Fran finally enter the deepest part of the dungeon, they are shocked to find a greater demon capable of destroying an entire nation, to make matters worse he possesses dark magic and other extra skills that are still unknown to the teacher, but interestingly it is later revealed that a goblin of level 11 is actually the dungeon master instead of the greater demon. He stands next to the dungeon core and complains about the fact that Fran killed his plans for the goblin stampede along with the king and queen, however when he keeps nagging about the recent loss, the greater demon eventually loses his cool and intimidates him with a blast so that he lets him handle the situation from now on. Once the dungeon master has been forced to stop talking, the greater demon turns his attention to Fran to prepare for the battle. When the fight begins teacher informs Fran that her enemy's sword has a high mana conductivity, meanwhile, the greater demon also acknowledges the fact that Fran's sword skills are definitely superior to his. However he has far more experience and smartly lures his opponent into different traps before attacking surreptitiously, Fran struggles to keep up, unfortunately things only take a turn for the worse when the greater demon suddenly vanishes into thin air and appears in the very next moment behind Fran. Before she could do anything the demon cut both of her arms and teacher starts falling into the deep stone crevasses, at this moment it almost seems that the battle is over and the greater demon is going to kill Fran, but a miracle happens as teacher uses parallel thought to defend Fran at the very last moment. Using firewall along with telekinesis and greater heal, teacher saves Fran's life and stops the battle from ending, when the greater demon uses shadow magic to try and attack her. Fran not only defends herself but also manages to inject some demonic poisonous fong into his bloodstream. Sadly it has no effect on the demon, by this point teacher seriously starts considering using the teleportation feather and running away from the battle, but the greater demon has his own plans. He has noticed that Fran has been able to stay in the fight for this long only because of her superior sword skills, Therefore he uses his extra skills a named skill taker to steal her ability and makes it almost impossible for Fran to win the fight from here on. However after using the skill taker power, Greater Demon realizes that Fran continues to show the same agility and dexterity with her magic sword, it turns out that the power does not work when a skill is borrowed, so the young black cat girl is safe, unfortunately the Greater Demon has had enough by now. When the dungeon master tries to help him by summoning his best fighter goblins, he casually proceeds to kill all of them at once without a shred of remorse, since he no longer wants to stay in the dungeon, he decides to end the battle once and for all, the greater demon then uses darkness Volker, which is so powerful that friend barely manages to save her life. At this point teacher decides to take her to safety before something horrible happens, However Fran is adamant that she wants to continue fighting till the end so the magical sword is forced to give her his powers to ensure that she has some chance against the greater demon. After the greater demon starts attacking indiscriminately, it becomes increasingly clear to Fran that the battle will eventually become unwinnable for her if she does not do anything, meanwhile the dungeon master also loses his cool and asks the greater demon if he is trying to bring the whole dungeon down with his aimless attacks. However in all this panic teacher notices something interesting, although the greater demon is attacking indiscriminately, for the most part he is deliberately not bombarding the area where the dungeon master is standing. 
Suddenly a brilliant idea comes to teacher's mind and he uses fire arrow to try and target the dungeon master directly instead of focusing on the greater demon, as he had expected the greater demon puts his own body on the line to protect the former, that's when Fran also realizes what's happening. Before the battle against the goblins began, she had asked Donadrond about what happens when the dungeon master himself is defeated, Interestingly the highly ranked adventurer had told her that the activities inside the dungeon immediately come to a halt in such a scenario and the monsters inside also perish. Friend realizes that she has been fighting the wrong person all this time, teacher adds another interesting point that if they manage to defeat the dungeon master then the greater demon summoned by him will be disabled too. Therefore the duo uses the fire arrow and fire javelin attack to take down the former but the latter intervenes and uses a protective shield to save the other, at this point teacher and Fran both know that they won't win like this, so the former suggests an interesting plan and the latter immediately agrees. Teacher has studied greater demon's movements so far and had concluded that there is a 3 second gap in which he recharges his mana after casting magic spells, he plans to use that to his advantage and asks Fran to throw him in his direction with wind magic. Fran knows that she can't defeat him in her present state, so she listens to her magical sword and throws him in the dungeon master's direction, as teacher is getting closer to dungeon master, the greater demon tries to protect him by casting a magic spell, but teacher expected that and changes his direction at the last moment. He suddenly turns towards the greater demon himself and manages to penetrate the crystal embedded in his chest. Although he tries to fight back, the greater demon dies moments later but the magic swords also break into pieces in the process. However using the crystal he just acquired, teacher manages to recover in just a few moments, friend then proceeds to corner and attack the dungeon master who is too weak to defend himself, she manages to kill him without breaking a sweat and just as Donadron had predicted, all activities in the dungeon suddenly come to a halt. After managing to defeat the greater demon and the dungeon master, Fran meets Klimt who congratulates and thanks her for her contribution to fighting the goblins, when Fran denies that she does not know anything demons crystal, August Alsan the vice captain of Alessa's knights suddenly barges into the office and claims that Fran is lying. It turns out that he has a special ability known as falsehood that supposedly grants him the power to detect lies, teacher sees this as a great opportunity to use the skill taker technique that they recently acquired and asks Fran to steal August's skills falsehood and etiquette. Once he loses his ability the vice captain of the Alessa Knights is unable to pressure Fran to find the truth about the demon's crystal, when he is gone after embarrassing himself, Fran learns that he has been promoted to rank D thanks to her recent achievement, in addition to this she also gets a reward and payment. Later that evening teacher suggests to Fran that they should use their monetary reward to give a treat to the adventurers that fought against the goblins alongside them, Fran naturally does not decline such a kind request and everyone celebrates the fact that they fouled the dangerous stampede. That night teacher has a very strange dream where he sees himself getting reincarnated, the following day Fran and teacher continue their journey and the former complete various quests as an adventurer. Since they travel so much, the latter decides to make cooking arrangements using dimensional storage space so that they never run out of delicious food while they are living in the wild, teacher even cooks different kinds of curries for Fran and she falls in love with them. Therefore he comes up with a plan to store curry in the dimensional storage space to ensure that Fran always has something to eat. Fran has been out of Alessa Kingdom on different quests for almost a week and is completely clueless that a lot has changed in the meantime. When she finally returns one evening, she is greeted by the gatekeeper who informs her that August has been looking out for her lately, it turns out that he embarrassed himself in front of the royalty and ended up upsetting his father Count Holmes in the process. The guard suspects that he is driven to desperation for some inexplicable reason and warns Fran that there are some terrible rumors about him in the recent past, therefore he tells her to be very careful from now on and avoid any trouble. As Fran is walking through the market, Teacher argues that the vice-captain of the Alessa Knights embarrassing himself in front of the royalty may have something to do with them using the skill taker on him, just when the duo is discussing this, Teacher realizes that they are being followed and informs Fran. He tells her to go to an isolated place so that they can deal with their stalker for good, however when they eventually reach a quiet area, Fran and Teacher are shocked to learn that they have been followed by August Allsand all this time, he is in such a terrible shape that Fran initially fails to recognize him and thinks that she is actually faced with a real-life zombie. 
August accuses Fran of ruining his life by using a curse on him and is determined to take revenge, although Fran tries to dismiss the claim that the two have met in the past the vice captain of the Alessa Knights eventually confirms Fran's identity because of her magical sword, he vows to not forgive her and goes as far as demeaning her people. Viscount then calls Juran, an assassin he has supposedly hired to deal with Fran, when the mysterious creature finally reveals himself, Fran is shocked as she realizes that he is a blue cat who are the sworn enemies of the black cats. When Fran realizes that Viscount All Sand has come with a blue cat, she becomes extremely cautious, looking at her strange reaction teacher becomes quite alarmed as he wonders what possibly could trouble her so much about him, it turns out that blue cats betrayed the black cats a long time ago and eventually even sold them off to the slave traders. To make matters worse Juran confesses to killing several black cats in his life and even torturing them alive, listening to him makes Fran infuriated but afraid at the same time and it appears that she is giving up the fight without trying, teacher notices her strange behavior and reminds her that she is now an adventurer who is trying to evolve. She can't let her fears guide her choices now and ask her to have faith in herself, the words of encouragement appear to do wonders and Fran finally begins to stand on her feet, Juran is now overconfident and underestimates his enemy, but Fren easily manages to slice his arm that was holding the sword and throws it into the dimensional storage space. After that she cut off all of Juran's limbs and makes him pay for his crimes, despite being defeated soundly, Juran is unable to accept his fate until his last moments, but Fran is ruthless and just decapitates his head without any mercy to end the battle. After that she contemplates the chances of killing Viscount All Sand but teacher advises against it. Soon Clint summons her to his office and tells her to not get involved in any matters related to the nobility, as she is leaving Fran meets a woman who later turns out to be Amanda, a powerful A-ranked adventurer who runs an orphanage. However she follows her everywhere so Fran is forced to ask Nell about her and she learns that even though Amanda is weird she is not really a bad person. After learning a thing or two about Amanda from Nell, Fran visits Clint's office when she learns that the guild master wants to see her. It turns out that he has an important mission for her, so as soon as they can talk in private, he shows her a number of precious crystals that he has collected while he was still active as an adventurer, it turns out that all of them are from monsters ranked D or higher, making them a valuable asset to Fran and teacher. Clint offers to give Fran two of those crystals on the condition that she goes and investigates the spider's nest, which is a dungeon nearby Alessa, while Fran is interested in the offer, she feels that she deserves more and does not hesitate in asking for 10 crystals. Naturally Klimt knows that she is asking too much and the two start bargaining with each other until they mutually come to the decision that investigating the spider's nest is a challenging enough job to deserve 5 crystals, however it turns out that Klimt does not necessarily have an ulterior motive to send Fran to the dungeon. After she was promoted to D-rank suddenly, a lot of adventurers were not happy with the decision, some even went as far as accusing Clint of being inappropriately interested in young girls which he naturally didn't like. With the criticism mounting against him, Clint appears to have decided to give her the investigation of Spider's Nest, a deranked mission, so that she can prove herself. However Clint is more generous than Fran had expected him to be and he also promises to give her a pass to the well-known dungeon in Ulmet if she completes her mission successfully. But it turns out that Amanda has been listening to their entire conversation and wants to join the investigation as well. Since she is a senior adventurer it does not seem that Clint has a choice to ignore her request. As Amanda and Fran are about to embark on the quest to investigate the spider nest dungeon that is under Alessa's jurisdiction, they realize that they won't be the only ones going there, it turns out that the quest has been turned into a promotion exam for two Irank teams named Forest Eyes and Dragon Roar. Eisel, Cruz and Rig are the three examiners who are going to oversee the entire process and judge the performance of the adventurers to eventually make the promotion decision. Krad who's the leader of Dragon Roar is not happy at all about Fran's sudden promotion. He goes as far as calling Klimt a pedophile and tells Fran that everything she has achieved so far is because of her connections, Krad then challenges her to a battle to settle the debate and Fran decides to accept it to prove herself once and for all. When the battle begins, Krad shows off his weapon and overconfidently claims that no adventurer up to his rank has ever been able to defeat him, he starts off aggressively and unleashes a few attacks which Fran easily manages to evade, the battle does not last long as Krad is too slow for the young adventurer who does not even bother using her powers. 
Friend Cosley ends the battle by kicking Crad in the head, after Friend manages to defeat Crad, the rest of the adventurers stand dumbfounded and surprised by her powers, she is about to resume her duties when Amanda challenges her to a practice battle as well, Friend does not hesitate but asks her to not bother her if she wins the fight. Amanda loves the young adventurer's confidence and asks her to call her mama in case she loses, naturally Fran does not like that and vows to win the battle. When the fight begins she is surprised to find that her rank A challenger actually uses a whip, Amanda nonchalantly unleashes her weapon and ends up making a small cut on Fran's face. Now Fran realizes that her opponent attacks really fast, and it's tough to follow the movements of the whip, Therefore she starts paying all of her conscious attention and manages to surprisingly avoid a lot of attacks. Amanda then decides to try a little harder and uses mana to make her whip even more effective. Fortunately Fran is up for the challenge and continues to evade attacks with even more agility. Amanda praises her young opponent and reveals that no one except her has been able to evade the mana-infused whip in a long long time. The rank A adventurer has played around enough at this point and tries to end the battle. But Fran is ready for everything that she throws at her, she has already asked teacher not to interfere in the fight and tries to go for the kill too, as she rushes towards Amanda, the whip is unleashed in her direction with great intensity. However Fran does not flinch even for a second and continues to run toward the rank A adventurer but does get hit in the stomach by the sharp blade at the end of the whip, when she has closed the distance, Amanda uses her defense technique to evade Fran's sword attack. However as friend gets tossed in the air she smartly moves behind Amanda. When the rank A adventurer turns back she gets engulfed in the flare blast attack unleashed on her, everyone stands in complete silence as Amanda's fate hangs in the balance while Fran is struggling to get up because of her injuries. But suddenly Amanda emerges unharmed from the fire revealing that her defense technique named Spirit's Affection activated on its own and saved her, unfortunately Fran's stomach injury is too serious and she faints after coughing up blood. Amanda uses her powers to heal the young adventurer, later that night other adventurers fight Amanda inspired by Fran but none could challenge her the way she did. After a long travel and a lot of preparation, the adventurers finally get to the spider's nest dungeon, they start their investigation from the first floor with a lot of enthusiasm, as they had expected they do not face that much of a challenge there, the spiders do try to attack them but are easily defeated by the combined efforts of dragon's roar and forest eyes. But instead of using too much power on them, they smartly just kill the monsters since their silk is quite valuable in the market, they then proceed to the second floor where in addition to the spiders that they have faced so far, they also find dangerous insects. But being well-trained adventurers they take the challenge head-on and easily manage to clear the second floor too, meanwhile Fran who has been curious to learn from Amanda asks her about skills, techniques, and magic, when teacher hears her talk to the senior adventurer so frankly, he realizes that Fran has probably started trusting Amanda a lot. Now Fran's trust is understandable since Amanda has always been kind and helpful towards her since the day they met, so as soon as she gets the opportunity, Amanda starts telling Fran everything she knows about different techniques, her explanations become interesting when she talks about magic and its relation to fire, earth, wind, and water. Furthermore she also adds light and dark magic. Although Amanda does not know it yet, Fran actually knows the four elements in addition to the dark magic which makes the rarest of the rare mage, after successfully investigating the first five floors of the spider's nest dungeon, the adventurers finally get to the sixth and the most dangerous one. However nothing could have prepared them for what was about to happen, they were surrounded by spiders as soon as they entered, so the mages and archers tried to restrain the enemy's moves, one of the adventurers notices that the spider are a lot tougher there compared to the previous floors. It turns out that they are now dealing with trick spiders who have evolved from the trap spiders that they came across in the dungeon before, their ability to inject deadly poison makes them extremely dangerous. After taking cognizance of the situation, it becomes obvious that the present mission is too much for rank E adventurers so Dragon's Roar and Forest Eyes are told to fall back, Bert and Victor are even captured in the spider's web, the adventurers act immediately and run away after freeing their comrades. Unfortunately Bert and Victor are paranoid by this point and they start running in all directions, they eventually end up running toward a direction where trap detection has not been performed yet, when they fall down the stairs they accidentally take Fran along with them. The hall where they end up turns out to be a place where someone has placed a complex trap of weapon disarm and teleporter, 
Although Fran tries hard to hold on to Teacher, the weapon disarm works and the trio ends up disappearing without a trace. Teacher panics as soon as he realizes what has happened and tries to use all his abilities to try and find her. But sadly he fails to find any trace of Fran, the guild map also does not help them and the most likely room where the trio should have been also turned out to be empty. Amanda then fears the worst possibility that Trick Spider's finely evolved form Trickster Spider is probably in the dungeon. This could potentially be a piece of bad news for all the adventurers there. Meanwhile it is also revealed that Amanda's suspicions are spot on as Bert, Victor and Fran find themselves in front of the Trickster Spider who appears very threatening. After Fran, Bert and Victor go missing, their fellow adventurers realize the urgency of the situation immediately as they are unable to track down their whereabouts despite their best efforts, therefore they split into different groups to start a thorough inspection of the entire dungeon. Since she is overpowered, Amanda takes Fran's sword and starts looking for her without any help. Meanwhile Teacher is also aware of the urgency of the situation, after all the options appear to not yield any results, he starts going through his skills to see if there is something that can be used to help Fran. He then realizes that there is a summon ability that he has never used so far. Teacher decides to look at the familiars he could summon at this point and eventually chooses the Onyx Wolf since it has life detection skills, unfortunately the beast starts attacking Teacher after being summoned as he unknowingly infuses excess mana into him. This pushes the Onyx Wolf into a berserk mode in which he blames his master for the suffering that he is going through, the crystal inside him can barely withstand the excess mana and teacher learns that naming the onyx wolf will help him get control of the beast with a 93% probability of success. Since teacher does not have much of an option, he decides to name the familiar Yurushi, luckily this appears to have the desired effect and the onyx wolf calms down immediately, at one point when he was out of control, Amanda was about to kill Yurushi as she saw him as a threat but teacher used telepathy to talk to her and managed to convince her not to attack the onyx wolf. Once Yurushi has calmed down, teacher orders him to use Fran's body odor to find her before it's too late, Yurushi immediately springs into action and after holding teacher in his mouth, he starts running deeper into the dungeon's sixth floor. Meanwhile the trickster spider has viciously attacked Bert, Victor and Fran, it does not take her much time to seriously injure all three of them. After getting beaten up brutally Bert and Victor can barely stand up to confront their enemy, Fran has been poisoned as well but recalls teacher's uplifting words that have always encouraged her to fight for herself, despite the pain and agony, Fran lifts herself to her feet and announces to the trickster spider that she is a black cat who will evolve one day. She engages in a brutal physical confrontation with the trickster spider after saving Bert and Victor who were buried under hundreds of spiders, the duo sees Fran struggle for their lives before losing consciousness, meanwhile Yurushi takes teacher and Amanda to a wall just next to the hall where the fight between Fran and trickster spider is still ongoing. First Amanda uses tornado lance to dig a big enough hole in the wall so that the trio can go to the other side. But teacher notices that there are too many spiderwebs on the other side and there is a good possibility that they will end up getting caught in that. So he decides to use elemental sword fire to clear a direct path but the attack is so powerful that he passes through all the obstacles and ends up stabbing the trickster spider who runs away immediately to save her life. Teacher and Fran are jubilant to reunite again but they have to tell Amanda the truth about them now. After asking for teacher's permission, Fran tells Amanda that her sword is actually an intelligent weapon that not only helps her with strategies but also absorbs crystals and shares powers with her, the rank A adventurer is thrilled to learn Fran's secret and celebrates the fact that she is safe. That's when they come across the guardian spirit, Terua who supposedly guides them to their companions, in the meantime the adventurers have been fighting hard against the spiders but were losing the battle. When Amanda and Fran arrive there, they quickly turn the table with teacher and Yurushi's help, the trickster spider also shows up and Fran tries to take her on to settle the score, this turns out to be a bad move on her part, as the trickster spider surprises her with her strength. When Amanda sees Fran fall, she couldn't keep her emotions in check. She uses her powers to kill the trickster spider so mercilessly that even her crystal is not found afterward. Once the dungeon has been secured, the adventurers find large amounts of crystals inside which are collected for the Alessa guild. After Fren returns to Alessa, she meets Gallus who has made extraordinary armor for her. After trying it Fran is confident that it will be quite useful in combat, 
Now that she has received permission from Clint to explore the Ulma dungeon, she says goodbye to everyone and leaves Alessa to embark on her next mission. Back in the dungeon when Fran was hit by the trickster spider, Amanda suddenly recalled the two black cats, Kinnan and Flamia who once were under her care, they eventually wanted to become adventurers but Amanda never taught them to fight as she felt that staying away from such a job will ensure a longer life for them. However they were adamant about evolving, so they left one day with the goal to find a way to evolve, Amanda tried to find them but to no avail, many years later she found out that they passed away, when Fran is leaving Alessa and calls her mama, she suddenly realizes that Fran is actually Kinnan and Flamia's daughter. After Fran embarks on her next adventure, Farion meets Klimt in his office, it turns out that he has been sent to the dungeon as an agent to investigate a few things, it has now been established without doubt that August colluded with Rados in the north to give an evolution potion to the spiders which led to all the chaos in the dungeon. When Klimt inquires what Terua thinks about Fran, Farion summons him, the guardian spirit reveals that Fran harbors no ill will and has pure intentions, although Klimt has been supportive of Fran, he has also kept a close eye on her to ensure that she does not turn out to be a spy. After Teruah's reassurance he is confident that she can be trusted. In the post credit scene, Fren uses teacher to fly out of Alessa, but she is suddenly confronted and knocked down by a ghost-like skeleton figure that is traveling on a horse. Fren falls all the way to the ground and ends up in a hut, luckily she does not seem to have been injured probably because of teacher's timely intervention. But when Fran looks up, she finds a strange man who introduces himself as Jean Duvix, a supreme necromance in pursuit of the highest order of dark sorcery. So this is the end of anime, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it.